In this video, I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step plan for how to prepare for the BMAT to maximize your score. We're gonna look at important changes that have occurred this year, how long we should prepare, what a typical session should look like, and what resources and techniques we need to use to make sure we're maximizing our score to ensure that we can get into the most competitive universities. And at the end, we're going to be talking about what kind of score you need to be aiming for depending on the university that you're applying to. And then I take all of my BMAT tutors that I work with and ask them to pull all their best advice and give a list of tips and tricks and strategies that are going to help you score the highest possible when you sit your BMAT. My name is Dr. Ash. I've been teaching the BMAT for several years now to my Future Doc Elite group where we do one-on-one -on -one mentoring to help people get into medical school. Firstly, the most important thing is that this year they have just made an announcement that the BMAT test will be sat for the very first time completely online, except for if you're in Singapore and Thailand, which will be in the old way. The biggest difference for this is for section three, whereas usually you would have had 30 minutes to hand write as much as you can. Here it's exactly the same time limit except for you're going to be writing it on a computer and therefore they've put a 550 word limit on how much you can write for that section. Now this is probably going to be a good thing because most people can type a lot faster than they write and it also means that when you're writing your section 3 you can rejig and edit things after if you have enough time left at the end. So I'm going to be making a lot of videos about the BMAT over the next few weeks and we'll cover each section in turn so I won't dwell on this anymore you can just see future videos for where I'm going to talk to you about the best strategies for the section three so when preparing for the BMAT I advise that you do it in three stages now the timing of this we'll talk about later but for now I'm just going to go through what those three stages are and what you should be doing at each one step one is familiarization it's really important to understand all of the sections get to know them as I said I'll be doing some videos going through each one in turn very soon but you need to understand all the theory, all the types of questions that come up and all the techniques that you need to know to tackle them and know how to best manage them efficiently, quickly and correctly. Later, I'm gonna talk about resources and for each section, which one I think is the best and recommend most. When you feel like you've finished phase one, it's time to move on to phase two, which is doing practice questions. Now, as we said, for the first year, the BMAT is turning into an online format, but there are a wealth of resources of practice questions in books and online resources that you can try, again, that we'll talk about later. Once you're comfortable with phase two and are familiar with the questions and are comfortable understanding and answering them, it's time to move on to phase three, which is to try past papers or mock exams. The time to move on to phase three is dependent on the kind of score that you're trying to achieve. So we're going to talk about scores later and when it might be time to start trying some mock papers or past papers for yourself. Unlike the UCAT where there's an abundance of past papers and mock exams for you to try, the BMAT has a bit more limited resources with this. We don't have many past papers and now that it's online we have very few online practice mock tests. You have a limited number of these so later we're going to talk about how to use them wisely but one of the important things to note is with everything now going online BMAT have now released an official mock paper that they're going to release on their own website around mid-September so should be coming out anytime soon. When you get to this phase three one of the most important things that I urge you to do is monitor and track your progress. This is the only way that you can tell how much you're improving, how much work you need to do and identify any of the areas of weakness that you need to focus on. And as I said before, you only have a limited number of these. So you really want to make sure that you're getting the most out of them by really mimicking the test as much as possible. To my students on my Future Doc program, I actually recommend that they go to the library and really simulate that game day, test day kind of jitters that you might get and the formality of it. So by maybe going to a local library and trying it on a computer, that can just do one more thing that simulates the test that little bit more to kind of get you ready for the big day. So let's talk now a little bit about timing. Firstly, which sitting should you take? That's a very important question that you need to answer. At the moment of filming this, we're kind of just hopefully coming out the last of the pandemic, but this year we've only got the 3rd of November sitting, so students don't really have a choice and it's taken out of their hands. But but in other years, you can have a February sitting, a kind of May time-ish sitting, then a September one and a November one. And it's really up to the student to decide which is the best time for them. In previous years, some universities, such as the Oxbridge Unis, have been known to say that they will only consider the exams that are sat in the September or November sitting. So that is something to bear in mind when considering which one you're going to pick. But really, it's going to come down to 
when your schedule permits it, which time gives you the best time to prepare, give you adequate time to do so, and encroach minimally on the other responsibilities or exams that you might have. And the biggest question I get is, how long should I prepare for? How much time should I dedicate to this all important test? Well, I would say that anything from four to eight weeks is usually adequate. Typically people who are sitting this exam are aiming for either the London BMAT Unis, so UCL or Imperial, or are applying to Oxbridge. So it's something that you need to score really highly in, and we'll talk about scores later. But because of that, you really need to dedicate a lot of time to making sure you can get the highest possible score. So where you lie on that four to eight week schedule will really depend on you and how much time in the day you can dedicate to BMAT prep. So when I speak to some of my staff who tutor on the FutureDoc program, the ones from Oxford and Cambridge say that they typically did minimum four weeks. However, some people felt that they, at the start, were kind of struggling with it a bit and felt like eight weeks was actually the most important. So how you progress through those phases is really going to depend on you. I would say that maybe start early and get a gauge for how well you're going to do and how easily you think you're going to be able to prepare for this and then decide how much time you're going to spend focused attention on this exam. As we'll come to look at later, it is such an important test. So during that time, especially if you're applying to Oxbridge or the London unis, you should really be dedicating as many hours as you physically can to it during that intense period of preparation. So now I'm going to give you some very practical and applicable tips and resources. We're going to go phase by phase and section by section to give you the best resources for each. So for phase one, we've really got to think about our section one versus section two preparation. Because when you think about section one, it's a lot more similar to the verbal reasoning and maybe the abstract reasoning of the UCAT. So here, you're learning skills that you're kind of trying to apply to work out the problems that they throw at you. However, when it comes to section two, this is obviously a lot more knowledge-based. So when it comes to things like that, it usually takes a little bit longer to get in your brain. So I would say that it's probably better to start with section two, use that kind of first and second pass of all the knowledge so that you've got that in the bank before you start your section one prep. Similarly, with section three, I would leave that a little bit later into your prep time to start incorporating in your sessions. That's partly because it's a little bit quicker to learn and understand the skills to score well in that. But actually, as we'll see later when we look at the scores, it's a lot lower valued no matter where you're applying. So kind of can be left to think about for a bit later. My second tip is for section two, don't be worried if you're getting lots of things wrong at the start. In the beginning, you're going to be absolutely terrible at this. Although you might have the knowledge, it might not be to the depth that you think you need, or also it's just gonna be about getting used to answering the questions in the style that are done in the BMAT. So don't be phased, just know that actually with a bit of persistence and continued learning and effort, you will get better with a bit of practice. My third tip is actually more a bit of reassurance that all the time that you spent preparing for the AR and VR of the UCAT will not be wasted because these lessons are based in logic and critical thinking and they will carry forward to your preparation and your understanding of section one of the BMAT. But we'll look now at some resources that you can use to help even further that knowledge. The next thing to note is that parts of the section one, such as the spatial, are very difficult to illustrate in books. It's all about rotating shapes in your head and moving things around, and that is really difficult to read from a 2D book. That's why getting a resource that gives you a visual representation of that is going to give you a lot better understanding of how to learn it and how to practice it when you come to sit the exam. And it's actually hard to find these live visual representations or worked examples of this. So that's why we've just created a brand new course for this year, which is exactly looking at all of those those things from spatial, logical, also all of the section two core knowledge that you need and how to write a really good section three. So if you wanna check that out, that's a pretty reasonable price for what it is. And it kind of gives you a full resource to give you all the base knowledge that you need for your phase one preparation. One thing that you might be aware of is that universities like Cambridge do something called the Thinking Skills Assessment or the TSA for people who are applying to the humanities subjects. Now this is very similar to the section one logical and spatial questions that you'll get. So if you want to do some practice questions, check out TSA Cambridge and that's going to give you a lot more practice questions that you might have found in just the BMAT format. For section two, there's a very intelligent way that you can prepare using some of the resources that I'm about to tell you about now. The most important thing is that actually on the Cambridge admission test site, they have lots of resources as well as an online syllabus that tells you everything that you need to know. 
So that's gonna give you a kind of framework for all the knowledge that you need to have ticked off for when you are ready to sit the exam. They also have an online guide on the website as well, which is really good and I'll link to in the description below. For section three, you're going to be given some information and then asked to write an essay on it. And usually it comes in the most common format, which is in three stages. The first is to explain it. So it asks you to write the definitions and talk about it. Then it's to argue against it, which is to create an objective argument around the subject. And then finally, it will ask you whether you agree. So that's giving you the opportunity to create a subjective argument and give an intelligent, well thought out decision as to what your opinion on the matter is. So I got all of my BMAT tutors to write down their top tips. So I've made a list which I'm going to read to you now. Of course, the most important thing is to read the question carefully. I know that goes without saying, but you'll be amazed how many people in the heat of the moment completely forget this. It's important to justify any viewpoints. Don't just say something without backing it up with a sensible argument. Really important, of course, to have at least a rough plan before you start, especially when you're doing this on a computer, it's going to make it much easier for you to kind of jot things down and you can chop and change things as you go along because it's gonna be so much easier than if you were writing it. Stylistically, one of the best things that you can do is use short, punchy sentences. Your style of English is going to make a massive contribution towards this. Not only do you get a mark specifically for your quality of English, but you will also be able to present the content in a much clearer fashion, and that's gonna help them understand it more and essentially give you a better mark for the other element of it, which is the quality of content. If you want some really practical tips about how to improve the quality of your English, check out this video that I did here where you can instantly get some tricks to kind of transform it right away. So one of the best ways to create fluency is to, when you're doing a practice test and you've finished, print it out and read it out loud to yourself. And then you'll get a real true barometer of how fluent it is or whether it's clunky with really bad English. And then as you really get good at this, you can start sounding it out in your head as you're writing it to kind of check for good fluency. So a few more tips and then we're gonna talk about scores and what to do to ensure that you get the highest. A really important thing is to make sure that you use the mock tests wisely. They are in short supply for the BMAT and it's just important that you make sure that you're a reasonable standard before you attempt them because you're going to learn a lot more when you've done the groundwork and understand and can at least have a good go at them to learn from mistakes. Another thing one of my tutors said was that the best advice that she got for the BMAT was to focus solely on that for a month. So she said that, of course, when you're doing your A-levels, for example, make sure you do your homework and don't fall behind. But other than doing the bare minimum of schoolwork, you should be focusing all your efforts on ensuring that you can get the highest possible score in the BMAT. That's especially true if you're applying to Oxbridge, where you basically need to be getting the highest you can possibly get. So again, I asked my tutors to collate their best BMAT tips. So here are some of the greatest hits that they submitted. So make sure you're comfortable with the theory for section two and you know it inside out. Make sure that you use the TSA for critical reasoning questions because this is a similar style to the ones that you'll see in the BMAT. Write things down that you didn't know previously. Make a note of the things that you're weak on and that way you can learn how to strengthen them. That way you can keep an information bank of all the things that you got wrong and turn those weaknesses into strengths. Also make sure that you go through your mock exam Exams, the revision of your answers and what you got right and wrong is probably more valuable than the attempt at the test itself, especially as these are a precious commodity when sitting the BMAT. So make the most out of them, get everything out of them by sitting them in a proper official format, simulating the test as much as you can, and then going through them at the end and squeezing all of the learning juice that you can get out of them by going through your answers. So another big tip is to not just aimlessly do lots and lots of questions, make sure that you're taking the time to go through your answers and do the learning learning from the reflection of the ones that you got right as well as the ones that you got wrong. And probably the most common tip that I got off all of my tutors is to know what score you need to get so that you can tailor your preparation accordingly to reach that score. So let's talk briefly about scores and kind of what you should be expecting if you want to get into certain universities. As we know, the main universities for undergrad that accept the BMAT are Oxford, Cambridge, then the two London unis that take BMAT, so UCL, Imperial, and then on top of that, it's Leeds, Lancaster and Brighton and Sussex. And then we also have Keele and Manchester that require it for some international students. So first, let's have a look at how Oxbridge use your BMAT score. So Oxford, for example, calculate your BMAT score by proportioning 40% to section one, 40 to section two, and then 20 to section three. The way they allocate that 20% of the section three is actually two thirds for the quality of content and just one third for the quality of English. Cambridge varies a bit more from college to college, but generally to standard chance, you should be aiming for at least 
12.5 in the combination of your sections one and two, and then you need to be getting about a 3.3 at least, and ideally with an A for the quality of English to stand a chance in section three. And just to give you an idea, I'm going to put a distribution of the BMAT scores according to who's applied and didn't get invited to interview, who got invited to interview but didn't get an offer, and then those who got accepted and given an offer of a place at Oxford. Then for the two London universities, you're typically looking at at least a 10.5-ish for section one and two combined. Then for section three, you want anything from 2.5 to 3.3, B or A, ideally A of course. And to remember that out of the two London ones, UCL are a lot more holistic, so we'll consider other things like your grades and personal statement, etc. Brighton and Sussex add your section one score plus your section two score plus your quality quality of English score and your quality of content score, giving you a maximum of 28, and the cutoff last year was 17.8 to get invited to interview. Lancaster are exactly the same, except for they don't count the quality of English score, so it's out of 23, and typically to be invited to interview, you need a score of around 10 or more. And then finally, Leeds doesn't actually have a cutoff score for BMAT. The way that they invite to interview and offer places is a full point system out of 56 points, and actually only five of those points points are allocated to the BMAT score. So they take your score, give you an overall score out of five, and it only contributes for that small proportion of the entire application. And finally, the most important thing is for what you should do on the day to make sure that you score highly. Again, I got my army of tutors to contribute to this and they came up with the following list. Of course, make sure you're well rested. The day before to ensure that you're relaxed and get a good night's rest, stop working at least in the afternoon or evening to make sure that you're not stressed. On the day, make sure that you've eaten well, particularly a carb rich meal to help you. The same thing that I say, which is simulate the test as much as possible because that's gonna replicate it and help you prepare for that situation and it's gonna only help to help you score higher. And in that vein of simulating the test, this year, make sure that you're using the computer-based online training mocks because that is what the test is gonna be like and we always say simulate it as much as possible to the real thing. So keep an eye on the BMAT website for online mocks and updated information to help you with your preparation. If you want a fully comprehensive resource that's gonna give you everything that you need to get the information to score highly in the BMAT, you might want to check out my online course which is actually really reasonably priced. You can get the link in the video description below. Otherwise, I've just made a brand new BMAT playlist which you can check out here and get loads of videos that are gonna help you perform well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in one of those videos.